daunting. You know, I've never, they've been asking for it for 36 years, and everywhere I went, they were like, please make another Top Gun. And I thought, I don't know how to do it. What do I do? How do I approach this? And I'm, they wanted it so much, and I thought, you know, I would go to bed at night after that time, over decades, and figuring out, like, how could I do it? What, how could I match this? What would that be? So, interestingly enough, artistically, I kind of thought, this is a really tremendous challenge. And that appealed to me. But I also, technically, we weren't at a place right away to be able to shoot it the way that I wanted to shoot it and put the audience into what they're going to feel when they see this movie. So every film you know that I did, when you look at American Made, where I was, I was experimenting with, with aviation in, in, a, in a different way and kind of looking at cameras, then to fall out, McHugh and I were, were doing that. And the whole time I'm going, I was always investigating technology and seeing where we are, how, and, and exploring the story. I'd, I'd lay in bed at night and think, what can we do? So it was not something that I took lightly. When I went in, it was like, and when I when we started, I said, everyone's got to be all in. They got to know what we're going to do. And I had to sit down when we were hiring the actors. Some actors, I said, look, this is, you're going to get, an, you know, I'm going to teach you how to become a pilot. And I had to teach the pilots how to become filmmakers also. So I had to teach them about editing, and lighting, and geography. Because when you're up there, you have to, you got to know what shot's going to look good when you're flying that. And also the actors had to give the performance. And, so that when they got up there, they weren't worried about anything else, but they just felt very confident in their characters and felt at home. So there was just a lot of trial and error, lots of wonderful, massive problems, and, and the, of course the relationship that I have with the Navy. I went back in 85 and, you know, with Jerry Bruckheimer and pitched the story to the Secretary of Defense, Lehman, at that time. And so all these years later, I'm on the Roosevelt, and I see a photo of him on the Lehman christening Roosevelt. And as you know, it was everything was coming full circle. But it was that kind of teammanship and collaboration. We wouldn't be here today. Have to. You're giving this back to the Navy. Yes, that's what we want. It's everything to me. It's everything. To me. You know, I want to thank them. I want and to have to have the world. And I've I was honored with. Uh, becoming the 38th civilian to be uh, an honorary naval aviator you know they gave me that commission and uh, I was quite I was very touched by that to have that and and also Top Gun school gave me a plaque that only the Top Gun graduates get certain specific Top Gun pilots get so I grew up wanting to be an aviator I wanted to make movies and I want to be an aviator I remember four years old I would sit there and look at my wall at P-51 and Spitfire on the wall and I dream about movies and stories and to have Top Gun Maverick and the P-51 in the plane is my P-51 that I fly and been flying for a long time. And, and you do a lot of flying in the movie. Yeah, I do a lot of flying in the movie. Yeah. One last final question. Are you ever able to go to a bar without being asked? <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I've sang it. And happily so, I have no problem really? singing it. Will None whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> you get me at a bar, we'll do it. <laughs> <laughs>